good morning everyone. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Good to see you this Sunday morning. Fun having the young people here and a little extra energy, right, and excitement. Yeah, they'll probably continue to add a little background music for my message today. So, But that video that we just watched, it was actually, it happened just last week. And Mother Moon sent out missionaries all around the world. It was quite amazing and exciting. Um, some of us may remember, I, I know when I was living in, in New York, um, we used to uh, sit, go for Sunday service and listen to uh, Father Moon give the message. And we'd be all sitting on the floor and he'd be standing up front and back and forth and, and just continually encouraging us. You can do it. The world is waiting to be changed. You know, you can do it. Go, go, go. <laughs> really filled with that. Uh, actually, even just the last uh, couple of days, I've been listening to Godable. If you're not listening, I check it out. Godable.org. You know, and, um, and he's reading right now. It's from the uh, God's Will in the Ocean. Yeah. And uh, the message father just said, hey, yeah, you can go and talk to the president of the country. Just say, hey, I'm here to talk to you. I got a message for you, right? That kind of confidence. So God has so much hope um, for us. You know, every, every, in all throughout history, God's called chosen people, people that know God and experience God um, throughout history. Even, you know, the Jewish people in all of Christian history and, and in modern times, you know, like the, the, the raising up, uh, like the Prophet Muhammad, raising up um, the uh, Latter-day Saints, working to bring us closer to understanding God as our heavenly parent and the importance of family as God's institution. So, well, thinking about this and the theme of, you know, we are the, the light of the world, I was thinking, okay, the chosen people, they're always called to be the light of the world. But it's not so easy. Um, I was, this is from the, the book of Isaiah. And, and the book of Isaiah takes place just a little bit before the Babylonian captivity. Where Israel, basically, they destroy the temple. They, they take all of the, the, the leaders of the Israelites to Babylon. And then basically they're captive there for 70 years. A difficult time. So this is the prophet Isaiah. He's talking to the king. He says, this is Isaiah 39. Isaiah rebukes Hezekiah, the king, saying, Hear the word of Yahweh of armies. So this is God speaking. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left. So, this is a discouraging time, right? And actually, uh, Jeremiah is also called the weeping prophet. He speaks a lot about this. He's the one that really has to talk to people about it. But just two chapters later, this is Isaiah again. This is in the 41st chapter. And this is the voice of God speaking to all the people of Israel. And God says through uh, Isaiah... I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So even though he's sending them out into, into exile, into Babylon, captivity, and a suffering time, he's saying... Don't fear, I'm with you, even in the midst of any difficulties. Now, I don't know about you, but life can be hard. (laughs) Uh, uh, I've had a few experiences of life being hard, right? But you know, God does not promise us an easy life. God's chosen people rarely have an easy life. So I'm sorry, you know, if you're here, if you're here for an easy life, you know, the unification movement, Father, Mother, Moon, they do not promise us an easy life. No. What they do is they offer us a fulfilling life, a chance to make a positive difference in the world, starting with our close family, 
You know, but expanding to our friends and society, nation, to the world. And it starts from knowing who we are. So even though life is tough, don't avoid the hardships. Don't avoid it. God is always with us. So there's nothing for us to be afraid of. Go forward. Have confidence. So here's some New Testament words. This is from, from the uh, letters, to, uh, the first John. And uh, it starts from knowing who we are. And John says it really clearly. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called children of God. That is who we are. I love that word lavished. God lavishes His love on us. Right? Why? Because we are God's children. And we forget that. We are God's children. And Jesus went even further. Not only should we know that we're loved completely by God who lavishes His love on us, God's love on us. Jesus says, this is from the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. He says, you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hid. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. We are the light of the world. God's chosen people, the people who know and attend God, are meant to be the light of the world, to bring hope and healing to the world. Now, in addition to the meeting and sending off of the the kickoff for sending missionaries around the world, uh, Mother Moon also had a worldwide national leaders meeting that, that she spoke at. And so this is just this is a little excerpt from um, uh, what she said to the leaders there. This is from the, um, the HJ Global News a transcript from that. And actually we'll see it uh, a little bit later. So Mother Moon spe- says, In this year of the Blue Dragon, so that's according to the Chinese zodiac and the lunar calendar, let us cast away all that is evil and wrong. As members of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, and as ambassadors for peace, so not just Unification Church members, but all ambassadors for peace, may all blessed families rise toward the world with a spirit of ascension, uplifting. Let us do our utmost to proclaim to the 8.1 billion people across the globe that true parents have manifest. And that the heavenly parent is now with us on earth. People need to know what an amazing time we live in. You know, uh, Father Mother Moon called by Jesus to the mission of supporting us to build true heavenly families. And to know that God is our heavenly parent. You know, God has the masculine love and also the feminine love. God is everything. It's all aspects of love. So, let's look just for a couple of minutes at three things that I could pull out on what it takes for us to be lights of the world. Lights to the world. Okay? Think of a a light bulb. How am I going to be a light bulb to the world? So the first thing light bulb needs is it needs to be connected to electricity. Right? We need to be connected to the source of power. What's the source of power? God! God, our Heavenly Parent. The spirit of unconditional love that we can experience from God is absolutely essential for us to be able to be lights to the world. So this is our investment in daily prayer and meditation and even resonance prayer, praying strongly, connecting with God and the Holy Spirit, bringing that powerful spirit of unconditional love. I mean, historically, it's just amazing how the, when people realize and recognize and experience the unconditional love of God, how they can transform their lives. 
people who are addicted to things, people who have all kinds of problems, when they experience the unconditional forgiveness, care, and love from God, they have power to transform their lives. To go places where it's scary. To even face down when it's, the world is fearful and scary. To know that God unconditionally loves us. And when we make mistakes, God still loves us and God's going to help us to grow. To, to correct it. Not just God doesn't just ignore our mistakes. Oh, I don't care. No, God cares. Because when we make mistakes, it hurts us. So God loves us and God helps us to correct those mistakes. When we do something, you know, when we, when we make errors, we repent for it. We, we confess and repent and we do things to fix it and make it right again. So the first key for us being able to be those brilliant lights of God to the world is connecting to God, investing time daily, quality time with God, our Heavenly Parent. And that's how we can be filled with the spirit of unconditional love. And you know, also God works through each one of us to feel and experience God's love. So also, we want to be people who can unconditionally love others. I mean, we, we get challenged through that, especially when we're parents. It's not easy to unconditionally love our kids. But we do, even though we get upset and frustrated and all kinds of things. But God's design is for us to know how to love people unconditionally. And in our life, we need to find these, I like to call them internal ables. People that we can go to when we're struggling having difficulties and we can honestly share tell the truth about what we're dealing with and they can receive it and love us unconditionally we need to have those kinds of people in our lives sometimes it's our spouse sometimes that's not sometimes our spouse isn't able to hear us when we're complaining (laughs) we need someone who can hear us So it's important in our lives that we also cultivate relationships and friendships and people in our life that we can trust and that God can work through to give us unconditional love. And not everybody is in a position to give that kind of unconditional love all the time. You know, sometimes they're up and sometimes they're down. I know sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down, right? But this starting point, knowing that we are God's children unconditionally loved and filled with God's love is the energy, the power, the electricity to let us light up for the sake of the world. Amen? Amen. Okay. Secondly, if our light bulb is covered with mud and muck and not so clear, then our light can't shine very bright. So to clean that up, we need to understand things from God's perspective. A clarity of understanding. This is where God's word, understanding God's truth, is so important for us to develop God's heavenly perspective. How does God see this situation? I know I'll, I see it. I'm really upset because that person cut me off or whatever. How does God see that? Oh, that person's having a bad day. They need some love. Oh, you want me to love them? <laughs> God, when we can, the more we can see people from God's perspective, we can let go of hurts and angers and resentment. And we can bring the truth. And when we understand God's design, how God's designed for us, and God's designed for restoration and healing, then we have power. We can see the vision. So we need to connect to God's love, but we also need to connect to God's truth. So the spirit and word, you know, spirit and truth. Mother Moon is always talking about, we need to act out on spirit and truth. So this is why it's important. Our daily Hunukkah study, daily reading God's word, filling our minds with God's perspective and coming to understand God's heart. So on that foundation of having a light filled with energy and and our bulbs bright and clean and clear with the understanding of God's work and God's providence well the last thing we have to do is we got to turn the light on right we've got to shine we've got the energy we've got the vision and now we need to do the actions to get out there and be a blessing to the world God designed us not to hide under a bushel Right? So we turn, we got our light on, but if you hide it, that's no good. God wants to share that 
share that love, that truth with the world, with the people around us. And God brings amazing people across our paths if we just keep our hearts and mind open. So that includes us bringing people to know and to experience God as our Heavenly Parent. Let's shine brightly for everyone to see. So we need God's love, the power of God's Spirit through our prayer life and meditation and connection with God as our Heavenly Parent. We need the the truth, Spirit and truth, God's Word, understanding God's Word. And we need the actions, the deeds, put it into action in our life to be a blessing to the people around us. So, I want to conclude with some more words from Mother Moon. These are the words, again, last week, that she was addressing to the the young missionaries who are getting ready to go out to to the foreign mission around the world. So, she said, Heaven has bestowed upon us limitless blessings and love. You, beloved our God, have been blessed by heaven. All of us, do you know that? We have been blessed by heaven. Amen? Amen. Come on, I need to hear an amen. Amen. Have you been blessed? You've been blessed by heaven, right? Then she continues. As we observe nature along the way, we feel how much heaven has waited for this day, longing to rejoice with its children. We're blessed. And all of heaven, God and the angels and all the saints in the spirit world and all the good spirits, they're all longing to work with us, to rejoice with us, to see the victory with and through us. God's called us to amazing things. We live in amazing times. It's up to us, right? With spirit and truth and action. Uh, Later on, Mother Moon says, I have told you before that you are pure water. This pure water, you see, must not remain stationary. It must flow. It needs to flow into the broader world. This means that through you, the pure water, one nation, two nations, three nations, the fallen world can become purified. If the world comes to know the true parents, and can welcome the heavenly parent, what would that be? Isn't that the kingdom of heaven on earth? Right? So we're called to be flowing out to the world, not stagnant water, right? Oh yeah, I'm just going to sit home and read my Bible and you know, and no. Well, we're supposed to take that, take that truth and share it with the world. That means inviting people to participate. Please invite people to come to Sunday service. We, we, if we start up uh, Divine Principle Studies, invite people to come for an evening program. Last night we had lots of fun. We had a, a movie night, right? A family movie night. Come and fellowship, yeah? I really appreciate uh, Alex and Jane organizing that and everybody who came and brought food. We had a really fun time. Uh, the kids having more fun. They were all over the place. Had a great time. So we're called to be flowing, not stagnant, always moving. And as the world understands God's masculine aspect and feminine aspect, and can really feel God is embracing all of us, and can receive the blessing of marriage and the change of lineage from uh, Father Mother Moon, the kingdom of heaven is really at hand. And God's longing to see that. And all those saints and sages in the spiritual world, they're all longing to see that. So finally, Mother Moon concludes her talk to these missionaries. She says, Knowing that you, the pure water, have become one with me and expanded the realm where the heavenly parent can be welcomed among the eight billion people on earth. Oh, how much, how much How much have I waited for your beautiful and resonant voices? Thank you. God, all the angels, the spirit world is waiting to hear our resonant voices sharing God's truth and God's love with the world. Amen? Amen. Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for the way that you continue to work in the world around us. 
Heavenly Parent, we see so many things that cause us to feel uh, discouraged and, and even fear. We see the conflicts happening in, in Ukraine and, and, and in the Middle East and Israel, Heavenly Parent, with the persecution in Japan, the suffering of Christians in Sudan and Africa and, and many nations, Heavenly Parent. How much you, you want us to be people of hope and encouragement, even in spite of all the difficulties and even the personal challenges that we face. Heavenly Parent, this morning, again, we come before you as your, your grateful sons and daughters, grateful for your love, and pray that we can be beacons of light to the world. We can bring your love, your truth, your spirit, your power to healing this world. Heavenly Parent, we want to start with our own close friends and relationships, our own family, Heavenly Parent. We pray for your guidance in every area in our life where we feel fear or discouragement or even confusion. Heavenly Parent, we pray that your Holy Spirit can fill us, can guide us, that as we center on your word and on your truth, we can, can become vessels of your power, your healing in this world. So Heavenly Parent, we thank you so much. We're so grateful to you, to our two parents and all those saints throughout history who have laid the foundation that we stand upon today. So we come together as your sons and daughters, grateful to you. We pray this together. Amen and adieu.